can get underway. Excellent. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your interest and participation uh, in the CSDE IEP preview series. My name is Brian Klimkowitz. I'm the Special Education Division Director. And on behalf of the Connecticut State Department of Education, I'd like to welcome you to our session. Whether you're participating live this afternoon or viewing this recording at a later date and time, uh, we welcome you. The CSDE is committed to improve the quality of IEPs and the special education process. We're in the midst of a historic statewide special education improvement effort and the shift to CTSED's Connecticut Special Education Data System will provide the foundation for achieving this goal. A tremendous amount of strategic planning and collaboration has resulted in a multifaceted system of training, technical assistance, and support designed to support our educators, parents, and community members. We're extremely proud of the collaborative efforts that resulted in our IEP quality training series and our soon to be released CTSED's navigation training. Change is difficult and challenging, but any effort that will benefit our students in the state of Connecticut is a journey worth taking. We'd like to thank you, our participants, for your partnership and support during this exciting time. This initiative will be successful because of you all. Today is our first session in a series that was designed to, pre uh, to preview and highlight the various components of the special education process. Sessions will take place each Monday afternoon from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m and can be accessed using the same Zoom link for each meeting. We will drop the IEP series flyer with a full schedule in the chat um, as well and share that information with you on our website and through any other mechanism that we have. So please spread the word. Today's sessions focus on the notice of planning and placement team meeting. Our commitment to you throughout this series is to do our best to start and end on time. These sessions, as I mentioned earlier, will be recorded for future viewing and posted on the new IEP CSDE website. So we'll drop that link in the chat for you as well. The structure of today's session will include a brief presentation followed by questions and answer session. Joining me in co-presenting this session today is Michael Tavernier from the Bureau of Special Education. And facilitating our session today is Steve Prophet and Greg Glidden and the CERC team. I just wanna thank our co-presenter and the CERC team for their support for this series. You can go ahead and advance the next slide. And another slide, please. And one more. Our goal today is to help you understand the new improvements um, to the notice of planning and placement team meeting document and to share a preview of how CT SEDS will support the generation of this document. Next slide. Due to the format of the presentation, you will not have the opportunity to unmute to ask questions. However, we do encourage your questions, please, at any time during the session. In order to submit questions, please place your question in the Q&A panel, which you'll find on the bottom of your screen next to the chat button. Using the Q&A panel helps us monitor all questions that have been asked. And please do not place questions. We would ask that you do not place questions in the chat panel as they may not be seen by presenters. If we do not have time to answer your questions live, we will, as mentioned, maintain those questions, save them, and have opportunities to answer those at a future date, which will also help uh, inform our future training and resources. Next slide. An important note is that this series is not a replacement for our IEP quality training or our CT SEDS user navigation training but the sessions are rather designed to supplement and assist you in your transition from your current system um, and your current processes 
two CT SEDs on our go live date of July 1, 2022. At this point in time, I'll turn it over to Michael, who will take you through important detailed information relating to the notice of PPT meeting. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Brian. We'll get the next slide, Steve. So here's the current PPT notice form, which you are all familiar with. The new form, once it's generated and finalized in CT SEDS, is very similar to the current form in content but it is different in its formatting and presentation, as you will see on the next slide. Although the information is relatively similar, it is important to note that the new form drives logic in the system based upon the meeting purpose and other data selections. Because of this, the meeting notice has a lot of power, so it will be important that it is completed correctly. Next slide. And here's the rest of the meeting notice. In the next few slides, we will give you a preview of the CT SEDS user interface and the navigation design, which results in the generation of this document in the system. Our goal in this design was not to change a form, but to improve a process and ensure procedural compliance and quality within each step of that process. As you can see, the generation of a notice of PPT meeting is very intuitive. The blue eye icons appear throughout the system and are designed to assist the user by providing information related to the task at hand. Any meeting notices that were generated in the past for the student are listed below. A previous PPT meeting notice could be selected at this point in the process to generate data and populate the IEP document. If the user needs to create a new notice of PPT meeting, they would click on the blue link in the upper right hand corner. And as you'll see in the coming weeks, that upper right position for links is consistent throughout the system. Next slide. And once you click on the link, the required data entry appears in the following format. Scheduling date, meeting date, and time and location. Additionally, parent information is pre-populated from data within the student demographics section of the system. The school location will pre-populate for the user. However, this field is editable. Additionally, if the team is going to be meeting virtually, a hyperlink can be entered in the meeting location field. <clears throat> Next slide. Purpose of meeting. The CSDE organized the purpose of the PPT using the following four categories, initial evaluation, IEP, ISP, and non-initial evaluations. These meeting purposes are not new, but rather structured and grouped in a new and improved manner. We would like to highlight a couple of terms on this slide that may not be as familiar to you. ISP stands for Individual Services Plan. Students with disabilities who attend private schools may, if offered by the LEA, have this plan, which would document supports and services for the student. Non-initial evaluation contains the following options. First, plan a targeted assessment. A targeted assessment is an assessment that is recommended by the PPT that is not part of the initial eligibility determination and not part of the three-year reevaluation. So it's those one-offs. Other choices here include review targeted assessment results and plan a three-year reevaluation. It is important to mention that the term three-year reevaluation is used throughout the system. You will not find the term triennial evaluation. Certain meeting topics, once selected, will, will, will require additional information. Next slide. For example, when conduct an annual review is selected and the student is 14 years old or turning 14 during the IEP period, transition planning will populate in the system and require the user to invite the student and indicate the outside agency participation, if any. Another example is when review revised the IEP is selected. Further details will, need, will be required as you can see. 
Is the review or revised meeting specifically because of a student transfer, a manifestation determination, or a restraint seclusion review? Next slide. Once the meeting purpose is determined, the participants of the PPT are identified. Once again, the student and parent information is pre-populated. Required members of the PPT are identified via dropdown selection, and the dropdowns are populated from a list of PPT members that have been identified in the team section of the system. Next slide. The final step in the process of generating a PPT meeting notice is to indicate whether or not procedural safeguards and special education were provided to the parent or will be included with the notice. This is also where the user would select to have a translated document created. In this example, the translated document language has been set to Spanish in the student demographics section of the system. The green buttons at the bottom of this section allow the user to close the interface, save information, create a draft, or a final document. Although the system saves information on its own, we recommend clicking the save button prior to generating the notice. And that as a practice, we would encourage generally, if you see a save button, click on it. And in summary, Information and data used to populate the notice of PPT meeting is used to drive logic in the system. Data entered into the PPT notice will populate fields on related documents. Users enter date, time, location, and participants. Parent guardian information is pulled in automatically from the parent information page. The name, title, and contact information for the PPT meeting, meeting notice will populate automatically. And finally, since the pandemic has resulted in the practice of having many more virtual meetings, meeting hyperlinks can be entered as an alternate means of meeting location. We hope that you have found this information helpful. Thank you for your attention and participation in this brief presentation and for your ongoing commitment to this important initiative. At this time, we're going to stop the recording and I will turn it back over to Brian and Steve.